17. That's what we're going to do. This video is, it's really been a long time coming. I've, uh, to be honest with you, I've been afraid to do this video because um, I notice here on YouTube that uh, when you do a video on something, you have to be like, if you're not the top expert on that particular subject or item, whatever it is, uh, you got you run the risk of being completely destroyed. So you just you really have to be careful. And um, I've been I managed to squeak through because my my the, my my tastes in this hobby can run to some weird stuff, some obscure stuff. Um, I can get away with it, but um, with probably the most popular pistol in the world, you're not going to be able to get away with that. So. Here's the story. I'm going to give you the disclaimer right up front. I probably know either as much about this gun as you do or less. So if you can, if you can roll with that, um, then let's uh, then continue on with me here in this video. But um, the reason why you might find this inter interesting is because my interests kind of fall towards more eclectic things. And I'm not just like... I don't know every generation's little particular idiosyncrasies with what they changed and what they did. Um, but that information is all out there. I like to find out like the weird quirky stuff. And then there is a lot of weird quirky stuff about the Glock. So come along with me if you're interested. I might not uh, be able to give you much technical information that you don't know. We'll go over some stuff, but okay, disclaimer over. Uh, most of what we're going to cover basically is going to be just what I find kind of uh, unique and interesting um, about the good old Glock here. So just to cover its uh, inception, um, I got the Glock 17 as my first Glock and I was going to get a 19, but a buddy of mine recommended you got big hands. Maybe you'd like the 17. It's a little larger. And then when I did my research into it, I actually decided to get the 17 just because um, just because. Um, it was the first Glock, and that I kind of liked. I was like, yeah, I want to have the one that was, even though this is a Gen 5, don't get me wrong, this wasn't, this isn't like the original first one, but the 17 was his original first design. And when I say he, I'm talking about Gaston Glock. Um, he has the same last name as the um, name of the pistol, ironically enough. What are the odds of that? What a coincidence, but... Gaston Glock was a very prolific inventor. We're going to talk about him a little bit. There's some kind of like weird, quirky stuff about that guy too. Um, well, he designed this around 79 to 82, somewhere in there. This is range. I read a couple of different things. Um, what, he, what did he design? He designed a polymer framed. Okay, so that's... Everyone got all different kinds of things of what they call this gun, uh, the, the, the material. It's polymer-framed, short-recoil-operated, lock breech semi-automatic pistol. Is Basically, that's the design. And um, it's Austrian. Um, Gaston Glock is Austrian. And uh, this, he, he, um, he won like a... Uh, a reliability and safety test for this to be the gun picked by the Austrian military and police. Um, by 1982, it was used by both, I believe, the military and the police in Austria. And, uh, yeah, in this video, we might actually, I might actually be doing a couple of starts and stops just to get my just to get my stuff together here, because there's yeah, there's a ton of information, you know what I mean? But this guy, Gaston Glock, okay, he had no experience with firearms design, even though he had all of these um, all of these um, patents for different things. He um, he did have extensive experience with advanced synthetic polymers, so of course that's where. This originally um, became, like everybody had heard all these rumors years ago. Well, if you're as old as I am, you do. I, I actually remember the first movie 
that this gun was in was Die Hard 2. And uh, I put a couple of uh, a couple of screenshots up here of uh, of it in in action in Die Hard 2. And in Die Hard 2, John McClane said a line that had something to do with, yeah, they're carrying Glock 7s. So he called it a Glock 7. So uh, the, it might have been a mistake that it, it, it's the, like in the script, it might have said 17, but he read it wrong, whatever. But, but it's good that he didn't use Glock 17 because now it makes it a Glock 7 would be like a completely fictional pistol because there is no Glock 7s. But the rest of what he said was that it was ceramic and that uh, it couldn't, uh, it didn't get picked up in metal detectors. It couldn't get picked up by metal detectors and that it costs more than what uh, the cop that he was talking to. It costs more than what you make in a month or something like that. So there's everything about that sentence is wrong because Glocks aren't made out of ceramic. They're they will definitely be picked up by a metal detector. Um, even if you use just this polymer bottom, which we'll take a look at later, there's enough metal in it, you know, to be picked up by a metal detector. And um, also, they're not that expensive. They're actually relatively, uh, they're moderately priced Glocks, and even back then they were. So, um, But what's interesting is that that stuck somehow, and I'm sure I blame John McLean, I'm sorry, but that stuck is like a thing where I remember people would say like, yeah, you see, you know, the Glock, they don't get picked metal detectors. You can get on a plane with them, whatever. There was this rumor for years after that. So that's where that came from. Um, and uh, Glock also introduced ferritic nitro carburizing into the firearms industry as an anti-corrosion surface treatment for metal gun parts. So, you know, there's like tenefer coatings and then they've changed it through the years and done different things. But the bottom line is, um, I don't know them all um, from top to bottom, but the coatings that they put on Glocks are, they were industry leaders in that also, you know. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? And uh, another interesting thing about these guys they're striker fired, right? But unlike a lot of striker fired pistols, let's um somebody there might have been guys that were nervous right from the very beginning because I didn't clear it. See with the Gen 5s, you got a nice red file over there, so it's obvious. So it's cleared. And um the thing about the Glock is that when you pull the trigger, you're charging the striker. So this the striker is it's kind of like, let's call it semi-charged when you um when you operate the action you see when the trigger is forward you know a glock is in its dangerous zone because then you know the striker is cocked but it's only semi cocked pulling the trigger this amount of trigger pull with the resistance here is further cocking the striker until it reaches the spot where it breaks and then the trigger just stays there it, obviously if you don't cycle the action to reset it or if it doesn't discharge to reset it. So when you see a Glock sitting like this, you would know that it's basically harmless because the striker is in its forward position. So that was like a, another industry leading thing is that the um, the feel of the of the action or the when the when the slide comes forward, it's when the slide comes forward is when it charges the striker and the fact that uh the fact that it only needs to charge it halfway is what made the glock very reliable because it could put a lot of the energy to the recoil spring could be put towards picking up the next round and successfully chambering it uh, as, as opposed to having to do other things like fully cock the striker and things like that. So, I mean, this is just stuff I'm reading. I, I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not like an expert with that, but there's, there's definitely an, a, a thing there that makes the Glock very reliable in that he had an innovation there where, where the, the striker didn't have to be fully cocked by the returning slide. So you could see when the slide returns here watch the trigger well, as the slide returns it's going to reset 
See that? It resets the striker, but it only has to reset it a little. And then your pull goes the rest of the way before it releases. See, so now every time it cycles, you can feel that it's it's a it's a it's a smooth type of action with the slide, and that these things hardly ever um, ever have failure to feeds and stuff because of that they're known to be very reliable, extremely reliable, in fact. Um, okay, next let's. <laughs> Let's move along. It's hard to like keep my, um, it's hard to keep, uh, it's, it's hard to keep the information in a, in a flowing, um, direction. Well, let's, uh, let me show you what, uh, you get with a Glock. How about that? I'll show you when you, when you buy one, you get a nice, uh, case like this. And with Gen 5s, I think this is also Gen 4, but definitely with the Gen 5s, you get a, um, a group of uh, back straps here. With uh, Some of them have this beaver tail on the back here. Some of them don't. There's thicker ones, thinner ones. Or you could go without one at all. And uh, you see there's a pin back here that you drive out with the tool that comes inside there, the, the tool that you would push that pin out with. And I put on, because I got big hands, I put on the largest, the thickest beaver tail one. So you see, see where that sits? Where I don't have to worry about that slide touching my hand at all. I couldn't hit my hand on that slide if I wanted to. And this thing really fills my hand nice. It's, it's beautiful. The way it feels is perfect. And um, it also comes with a uh, this this magazine uh, loading help, uh, magazine loading helper device, and uh, you definitely need that because uh, seventeen round capacity um, in here. I um, I live in a state that's uh, that mandates ten round maximum capacity, so I have ten round magazines here, which makes them single stack. But the, the magazines that normally would come in here would be 17 rounds. And uh, hence the uh, Glock 17. That's why it's uh, called the Glock 17, 17 rounds. Up, oh, see, I caught you. You were just scrolling to the bottom to make a comment and flame me. Well, stop right there. I was just texting you. It's not the reason why they call it the Glock 17, but... See, I knew the experts out there were going to watch up to this point, and they were going to—they were just waiting there, ready to jump on the keyboard and destroy me. I caught you. See, I, I caught you. Uh, it's called the Glock 17 because he was a prolific inventor, and this was his 17th patent. So um, he just called it the Glock 17, Glock's 17th patent. There you go. And that makes sense because the Glock 19 would be called the Glock 15 if it really had to do with, like, you know, capacity. So, uh, what do we got here? What am I missing? I'm missing some things. Oh, and, uh, the Gen 5s are cool because, uh, very nice of them. They, they include, uh, three magazines with the Gen 5. And, uh, let's take a break right now to show you my, um, realistic snap caps here. And these are my uh, these are my realistic my nine millimeter realistic snap caps, which I have beat the crap out of now for well over a year, cycling in and out of every different conceivable possible nine millimeter gun. Ones that are gentle to brass, ones that beat up brass. These things have fallen on concrete floors, been kicked all over the place, stepped on. Every single one still has its silicone. Um, firing pin protector in place and you can even see where they're getting hit they're actually getting hit by the firing pin it isn't some nonsense thing aren't you sick of those plastic ones that just fall apart and pieces come out in the gun look at these things they're still as uh as beautiful as uh new rounds would be they look you know what i mean and what a perfect uh, training aid here these things are durable realistic high quality they are the ultimate firearm training tool and they are realistic snap caps you can check the description down below and you can get uh 10 off and uh free shipping from these guys and also 
they uh, are in business during this um, uh, virus outbreak. They are uh, still fully functional. Might have slowed down their shipping a little bit. They're being honest by telling everybody that, but they are pretty much on schedule um, from what they say. And um, they've completely dumped Amazon because Amazon is very non-Second Amendment friendly. And they've had enough of them. So I respect them and I support them. These guys do not pay me anything. I just I just um, talk about how awesome these things are. They send me, they, they love when I talk about them so much that they send me snap caps to test out different ones, different calibers. I've bought plenty of them. They send me some. I love them. They love me. I love you. And uh, I'm going to show you how, uh, yeah, check the description. 10% off and free shipping. And these things don't cost a lot to begin with. I mean, I don't know how much 10 of the 9 millimeter ones is. It's like something like less than 20 bucks, I think, or around 20. I don't even remember. But not, uh, see how cool this thing works? It works good. People talk smack about this reloader that they give you, but I like it. It's hard to get in this last one. And look at it, like right there, you know? I enjoy it. And if I had to do 17 rounds, I'd, <laughs> I'd enjoy it even more. So let's take a look at how this thing cycles. Um, let me uh, back up just a touch there. So yeah, smooth as silk. This is what I'm talking about. The striker right then when I did that only really had to be reset when I let go. It only had to be set halfway. So it, you know, these guns, you, you'd be surprised. They're all doing like double and triple duty, you know, so... Uh, I want to find where uh, where they speak about um, they were talking about the design of it, and I can't for the life of me, I can't find that. But I might have to pause and then find it and come back. But let's let's cycle through some of these. And, uh, I want to talk about reliability? I mean, it'll just literally do this all day. You're never going to choke on one of these, even. Even snap caps that have been cycled, it's not even like they're brand new. You know what I mean? These things have been cycled through and through, and, uh, you know, the, the Glock is not going to have a problem with them. So there's a ambi slide release here on the uh, 17. There's no actual safety right on the outside, but there's a couple of safety features. It has, like, drop safeties and things, for like internal things for the firing pin, definitely. And it has this, uh, this might seem hokey to some, that like it doesn't actually work and that it's kind of corny, but this little trigger in the trigger thing is awesome. Like any sideways hit on the trigger, like something putting it in a holster and something catches on it or whatever is a good chance that that's going to prevent an accidental discharge. Only your finger in the trigger pressing that little button does it. And uh, there is no magazine uh, magazine uh, safety well, remo you know removing the magazine it will still fire um what else yeah and they had they had other models that uh, we could go through the models we could go through the Glock 17 the different Glock 17 models but there was a different one that had like a where the safe the slide release was on the other side for lefties but now they made it reversible you could reverse it if you want to it's not, it's not that you press it on both sides. It's that you could take it apart and put it back together with it on this side if you wanted to. So then that model went out. You know what I mean? There's a rail, uh, you know, an accessory rail down here for a light or laser or something like that that you would want to put on there. And those work really well because they tuck in nice and neat underneath this trigger guard here. So uh, what else should we do? You know what? I'm going to pause for just a second to collect myself. We're 20 minutes in. That was a lot of information. Let's get a cup of coffee. I want to take a look because there was some interesting stuff that was mentioned. I was looking at something online that was mentioning how it was really like taken from a browning design. And that interests me because if you've seen any of my older stuff, I'm a big browning fan. And I always like to look and see everything seems to just filter back to browning somehow, no matter what you're looking at, you know. And, and uh, I thought it was interesting and I want to take a look at that. So I'll uh, be right back with you. Okay, we're back. That coffee was good. All right, so let's move along. 
Here's the stuff that uh, I found really interesting. The operating mechanism of the Glocks, okay? And we're going to take a look. We're going we're gonna to open one up. And we're going to take a look inside. But this is interesting. Um, it uses a modified Browning cam lock system. And this is adapted from the high power, the Browning high power. Now, I don't have a Browning high power, but in my younger days, I used to take apart my father-in-laws and clean it all the time for him and stuff, you know, because, and it was a, it was a 68 high power the year I was born. I loved that thing and I wanted it so bad from him, you know, but the thing is he couldn't even gift it to me if he wanted to, unless, you know, I would have to find magazines for it. Cause like I said, uh, I'm stuck in a 10 round only state and, uh, I would hate to like modify those magazines and do whatever. It just, it never really came to be oh, because there was that whole thing about like, well, you know, I'd gift it to you, but the magazines, you know, <laughs> one of those things. And I, I don't have a Browning high power as much as I'm a Browning fan, but, uh, it's kind of like the Browning high power. Like we did in our last video with the, uh, Beretta, well, not the Beretta, the, um, the FN baby Browning. It was really, uh, somebody else that kind of put that thing together anyway, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely like a Browning, um, they say that he did some pre-design work on it. It was like his, it was his, um, his helper that continued his work and came out with the high power. And it was really like his ideas that they were kind of like working with before he died. You know what I mean? But I digress. This is a, um, similar design to the Browning high power. Uh, and specifically, this is why I'm reading this too. This isn't obviously not coming off the top of my head. The locking mechanism uses a linkless vertically tilting barrel with a rectangular breech that locks into the ejection port cut out in the slide. All right. So during the recoil stroke, the barrel moves rearward initially, locked together with the slide, about three millimeters, until the bullet leaves the barrel and the chamber pressure drops to a safe level. We've been through this before with different designs. You can see me pushing here. The slide is moving, but the barrel is staying integral with the slide. That's all it needs for the bullet to leave. Once the bullet leaves, you see that the barrel will drop. And the slide will be able to travel over it. Very interesting. Oh, you see how it, and, and then how it lifts back up into battery is interesting. Right? Um, until the bullet leaves the barrel and the chamber pressure drops to a safe level, a ramped lug extension at the base of the barrel interacts with a tapered locking block integrated into the frame, forcing the barrel down and unlocking it from the slide. This camming action terminates the barrel's movement while the slide continues back under recoil, extracting, ejecting, and reloading. And uh, the counter recoil, the rearward movement and counter recoil cycle are characteristic of the Browning system. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, let's um, let's take it apart now. Part of the taking apart of a Glock involves pulling the trigger, and I'll give you the huge warning up front right now. If you're new to pistols and you're watching this because you're thinking of getting one, or if you have a Glock and you've been, even if you've been messing with them for years, there seems to be an inordinate amount of accidental discharges with Glocks, and they always happen, always seem to happen during the cleaning phase or <laughs> when you're taking it apart. Because there aren't many guns where you got to pull the trigger to take it apart. And this is one of them. You have to relax the striker before you could take it apart. And uh, it will fire with the magazine out. So that's the thing. If a lot of people, they take the magazine out. If you're forgetting that there's a round in the chamber, this is not the time. You definitely need to be 100% sure. And then you relax the striker. A grip like this is what most people use because you have to pull the slide back slightly. You pull these two tabs down. There's one on either side. It releases the slide and it comes right off. So now here, inside, this is what I'm talking about, how there's me plenty of metal in here to get picked up by a metal detector. Look at this, um, uh, this amazing design. This guy, you could tell this was somebody that really knew what they were doing with polymers because the integration between the polymer material and the steel, it's, it's just incredible. It's very 
Very well designed, very intricate, gorgeous. Um, Glock pistols incorporate a number of features intended to enhance reliability in adverse conditions, such as use, utilizing advanced metal coatings, stub slide guides instead of true frame rails. So these are called stub slide guides. And, uh, and an unusual cocking me mechanism where the trigger is partially responsible for co cocking the striker. We spoke about that. So here's the slide and the recoil spring. This, this spring is not the um, original. I'm going to show you the original here. This was this was the original. This is what I bought to replace it. So this is the original one. And I got this from uh, the Glock store. McGill's Glock store. Where's my McGill's Glock store catalog? I'll give Lenny McGill a uh, shout out. But a boom, McGill's Glock store. If you've never watched Lenny McGill's videos, look him up on YouTube and watch. He's amazingly... Uh, it's a, an endless source of entertainment. But you can see, this is plastic, okay? This is riveted. This has got a hole in it. This feels light and cheesy. I'm sure it's plenty strong. I bought one of these. It says reduce recoil only because it's, it has nothing to do with the spring. It's, it's heavier. So because it's heavier and it's on the front of the gun... They're saying that it reduces recoil, but I got it just because this is like super strong. Look at that. Look at the back. Remember there was a rip. Where is it? Look at this. Would you rather have this rivet, this pop rivet that looks like it could come out at any time or this mach perfectly machined, beautiful piece? Look at the front. Because you see this. I mean, you, you see this up front. It's, it's in here. You know, you just want it to look like metal, not like plastic with a hole in it sticking up front. So, uh. Yeah, and the barrel uh, pops right out of here. And I mean, that's, there you go. That's the whole gun right there. The simplicity, um, yet uh, yet complex. <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right. Recoil spring. That's it. Simple as that. All right, what else do we have? Let's see, let's make a little room over here. Let's make some room in this room. What else do we got? Let's look at the patent. You know how I love to do that. Here is this patent. Let's, uh, let's back up a little bit. Whoa, a little out of control. Patent. 4,539,889, 9, 10, 85. Automatic pistol with counteracting spring control mechanism. This is a very detailed patent, too. Like this guy was... Uh, I think he drafted and drew these, too, because there's a story that he test-fired uh, the guns in his basement. And he would test fire them all left-handed so that if there was an accident, he would still be able to draw these drawings with his right hand. There is a story about that. So this is his 17th patent. Very detailed, right? We haven't really seen one that actually broke down every single last little piece like that. Look at this. this is definitely exactly how it looks today. And uh, here's the summary of the invention. Is huge, specific description. Very specific. Yeah, this guy was a he was a prolific inventor. Let's let's look at some of the things that this guy invented. Here's the list. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. Let's uh, let's look a little closer here. We have. Holsters, laser aiming devices, spades, rear sights. There's also some medical stuff in here. Treatment of vaginitis. Hmm. Wood glassification. Fat. Fastening. Fastening rail for a firearm. Is that how to spell fastening? 
product gas filter method and device for drying wood chips making aluminous silicates <laughs> I think I actually got that right yeah huh? wow and uh, there's one on the back here safety valve for steam pressure cookers he was around so uh yeah what else you know i did want to mention i want to thank uh 1957 shep for the uh shout out that was really nice of him he um he commented on a couple of my videos and i got to uh chat with him and he said he'd give a shout out on his channel and uh, he's got a pretty uh pretty awesome channel there with uh a lot of cool content and a lot of his subscribers were contacting me saying that uh you know he was glad that uh they he turned them on to my channel so that was really nice of him what else i feel like i'm forgetting something and then if i if i end the video it's 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 over i i, I don't want to have to break back in again well that's all i got for now don't forget about uh don't forget about my friends over here at Realistic Snap Caps. Trust me when I tell you, um, you will love playing with these things because that's what that's what you get an opportunity to do. You get an opportunity to play, and I'm going to leave them in for my uh, thumbnail photo for this video. And uh, until next time, uh, you all take care. I want to thank Beer Zerg Radiant, of course, for the uh, awesome intro and outro music. And um, now next time when we come back, we're going to come back and do another Glock. We don't have to really talk too much about the history. Um, we could just kind of talk about that specific model. You know what? We could do that. You want to, can we just, uh, can we not leave yet? And just maybe mention a couple of things about this specific model. The 17 is, uh, was introduced in 1982. This was their, you know, the first model. Um, and since then, several versions have been reduced. The 17L, introduced in 1988, has a longer slide and an extended barrel. Originally, it had three holes in the top of the barrel and a corresponding slot in the slide. However, later production pistols lack the holes in the barrel. And it's manufactured in limited quantities. The 17C, introduced in 1996, incorporates slots cut in the barrel and slide to compensate for recoil. Many other Glock pistols now come with this option, all with the C suffix on the slide. The 17MB is a version with ambidextrous magazine catch. This model, along with other MB variants, was no longer available upon the introduction of the 4th gen models, which have a reversible magazine catch. Glock 17M, introduced in 2016, was created in response to FBI solicitation for a new 9mm pistol, Differences from the Gen 4 model include remover of the finger grooves, ambidextrous slide lock, rounded slide nose profile, flared magazine well, and blah, yada, yada, yada. Glock 18 is a selective fire variant of the Glock 17. I think you could see those in the Matrix, uh, one of the Matrix movies where they're jumping around from car to car on the highway. That one had, had these Glock 18s, I believe. Um, they were developed at the request of the Austrian counterterrorist unit EKO Cobra as a way to internally test Glock components under high strain conditions. Originally produced in 86, this machine pistol class firearm has a lever type fire control selector switch installed on the serrated portion of the rear left of the slide. Interesting. You know, these Glocks, they could all interchange, uh, the 9mm ones could all interchange magazines too, but obviously if you have one of the smaller magazines and it can't extend fully to the top, those aren't going to work. But if you have long ones, then they stick out. They could stick out the bottom. So they have crazy like 30, 40, 50 round, uh, you know, uh, mags like that. And, uh, and then, of course, the Glock 19, which is known as the, you know, Big law enforcement gun, that's a very popular, you know, version of the Glock, is effectively a reduced size Glock 17 called the Compact by the manufacturer. It's first first produced in 88, primarily for, primarily for military law enforcement. 
The Glock 19's barrel and pistol clip are shorter by about 12 millimeters than the Glock 17. Uses a magazine with a standard capacity of 15 rounds. It's compatible with factory magazines from the Glock 17 and 18, giving the Glock 19 available capacities of 17 rounds and up. Um, to preserve the operational reliability of the short recoil system, the mass of the slide remains the same as in the Glock 17 from which it is derived, with the exception of the slide, frame, barrel, locking block, recoil, spring, guide rod, and slide lock spring. All the other components are interchangeable between the models 17 and 19. So uh, there you go. I, in my opinion, if you're looking to just grab a Glock, this is the one to do. And the Gen 5s are nice. I, I Like I said, I, I don't know every specific little thing, but I didn't really like the finger grooves. I kind of like the stippling here. I kind of uh, I kind of like the way they rounded the front, the nose of it like that. It's just uh, the three mags is nice. You know what I mean? And I thought there was a lot for uh, a lot for your money there with the uh, with the Gen fives, but I know there's a lot of reasons why people don't like them. But uh, this thing this thing feels good in my hand, you know. And I think it's the one that more cl most closely resembles the original, you know. So that's kind of cool too. So anyway, this has been Milser Barrage. I could probably go on and on, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a follow up with a different uh, Glock pistol. And if there's anything that I forgot as far as the history. Or uh, Mr. Glock himself. We didn't talk much about Mr. Glock himself. He has, he has kind of like a little bit of an interesting history there too. So we'll save that for next time. And uh, we've already, we've already been around. Uh, we've already been through so much to make this video um, long enough for one video on a Glock 17. And we will re revisit the rest soon. Y'all take care and uh, see you next time. Ha ha ha